<laughs> this is Ryan Elliott for ID Boxing. We're in Newcastle with me, Adam Morley. Adam, welcome, Newcastle. Hi. I'm good, mate. I'm good. Thanks very much. It's good to hear. Let's talk about why he here. Sol Dakers got himself an English title fight. Got very spicy yesterday. Been a fun little build-up. What have you made of what we've seen so far? Yeah, look, you're starting to see Sol's personality, and that's amazing. He's quick-witted. He's smart, and it's his first kind of English-speaking opponent. So. I'm so looking forward to Saturday night. I think it's going to be Sol's breakout fight and people are going to really see what he's made of and, and what he can do. His opponents with no secret of the fact that he just sees Sol as a boxer and not a fighter and that he's going to come pretty much put it right on his chest. Do you think in, in a way that will let us see the best of Sol Dacus when someone's coming right at him like that? I do actually. I think when you see Sol against the Bracamonte, it's difficult. It's hard for him to look tremendous in that fight. He's not got enormous one-punch power. Is a very, very, very skilled heavyweight boxer. I think it's very difficult to beat Sol Dakers. And we want him to win this fight, win the English title and move on. There's great domestic fights out there for Sol. I was about to say that. He's made no secret of the fact he doesn't want to wait around. If he wins this belt, it's a great first belt, belt to win on the domestic scene. But how quick do you want to propel him towards the British title after that? Yeah, absolutely. Straight away. I mean, look, he can, he can fight a Fabio Wardley, a Fraser Clark. That's the level he should be going to. I was just going through the rankings with the rest of the team and it's like above above Seoul, you know, it's really like the elite world guys, Fabio and Fraser. Just a word on Joe Joyce. We saw uh, Zhang Zhile confront him in the gym the other day. We're getting close to fight night now. How is Joe? Yeah, he's good. He's, he's lean, he's mean, and he's a wrecking machine. Uh, he's doing very well out in Vegas. He's sparring well. We brought some excellent sparring in for him taking this fight very seriously. Zhang's really tough opponent. He's a, he's a really dangerous opponent. He's going to be very, very dangerous in the fight, probably earlier than, rather than later. But we're taking the fight very seriously. Yeah, Joe's quite humble when he, he analyzes his opponents. And he said Zhang, he does expect to be very dangerous early on. Can only really gel into an exciting fight. But with that said, I think this ends in a spectacular knockout. I think it's a tremendous fight. I think they're both going to no one's taking a step back in that fight. They're both walking straight to the center of the ring. I think Joe's engine is what will win him the fight, and I think he will dominate the fight after the first few rounds. But yeah, I fully expect a Joe KO victory. Joe's holding tight in that WBO position. Obviously, we're waiting to see what happens with Fury Usyk, but we're hearing about the, the kind of order of mandatory now. Let's talk about WBA with Dubois, IBF with Hergovic. Have you guys had any indication of where your mandatory will be called in that pecking order? So the traditional pecking order is WBA, IBF, WBO. That's how they have done the heavyweight scene over the last years, which is obviously Joe's third, but it's never, it's never as simple as that. You've got to look at who the people are. You've got Dubois, you've got Ergovic, you've got Joyce. It really does become about money at some stage. And also, well, if Fury Usyk happens and there is a rematch clause, I'm not sure how the governing bodies will feel about that rematch clause. And if the rematch goes ahead, they'll probably all vacate at the same time. If they vacate, Joe Joyce is the interim, so he then becomes the world champion. If they, if he doesn't, if they don't have a rematch, it's up to the champion who will have four belts at that time to decide what order he wants to do and how he wants to do it. And normally at that level, you know, guys like Usyk, Fury, they have less of an interest in, in mandatories and more of an interest in massive fights. Joe Joyce is the biggest fight out there for Tyson Fury. It's the toughest fight out there for Tyson Fury. And if Tyson wins, as I expect him to, I really hope he honours his word and fights Joe Joyce. Yeah, he has said he'll fight Joe, but with what's gone on in the public negotiations in the last week or so, it's still a bit up in the air whether that fight will happen. Has there been any discussions as a contingency if it doesn't happen as to maybe Joe fighting Tyson Fury next? Not now. I mean, maybe a few months ago, but not now. Joe's fully focused on April 15th. I think Tyson Usyk will happen, they're the noises I'm hearing, I think it will happen. I don't think anything's defined yet, but yeah, I do think it will happen. One fight I've asked Joe about in the past, uh, Anthony Joshua is back on April 1st. He's always said he, he wants that fight, but he doesn't necessarily know if Anthony Joshua would want that fight. Do you think at some point, though, we will see Anthony Joshua and Joe Joyce? Look, after Joe fights Zhang, he'll fight Joshua, he'll fight Wilder, he'll fight Fury, he'll fight any of them. Wilder's promotionally free. Joshua is with Matchroom and DeZone and DeZone and Frank Warren have shown they were willing to work together before with AJ Fury and Fury's um, with, with Queensbury. So all three of those fights are very makeable. Do I think it will happen at some point in the future? Yes, I do actually. If I'm honest, I think it will probably happen when Joe's a world champion. Just get an update on the stable. Florian Marku, what's the latest with Florian? Florian Marku back from his hand injury in training with Grant Smith, looking at a May date.
Was your first fight, fight back from a hand injury? Are you expecting a, a maybe a bit of a comeback fight and then into something big in the summer? Yeah, perhaps, perhaps. Yeah, we're just looking at opponents now. Johnny Fisher, the Romford Bull, rolls on. Really got some momentum behind him now. When you first started working with Johnny, did you see what was coming? Did you see where we're at now, where he's selling thousands of tickets and that the show is going around the country? Yeah, I mean, look, when we first started working with Johnny, we didn't know what a ticket seller he was. He's an incredible ticket seller. But where Johnny's really surprised us is his boxing levels. He didn't have much of an amateur background. And you watch him develop in sparring and you see his levels and he's starting to really translate that into the ring. And that's what Johnny and his coach Mark Tibbs are really working at. Translating that sparring level where he's giving world level guys problems into the ring and learning on the way. But it could be something bigger for Johnny next actually. You say there's something big, what kind of level are you looking at? Because obviously Johnny's so young, he's still learning. What would you like to see for him? I'd like to see Johnny go the traditional way, start with a Southern Area title. Maybe take the English title if Seoul wins it, moves on. British title, Commonwealth, European Worlds. One fighter I wanted to get an update on, it's gone quite quiet on Lerone Richards at the minute. Obviously, we've seen what happened with Matchroom, he left Matchroom and other fights not quite happening. What is the latest with Lerone? Uh, Lerone's training with Grant Smith now. Wow. Lerone's training with Grant Smith now in the Steel City Gym, they're getting on great. Um, we're looking to get Lerone out and a bit of a tick over and then I've got something in the works for June for Lerone. Quite a big fight coming. Fantastic. All right, Adam, thank you as always for speaking to ID Box, and we'll catch you soon.